I also want to ask you about uh, the fact that you are a breath expert. Um, you've been called into courtrooms to speak on things like consent, consensual kinks, and autoerotic auto erotic asphyxiation. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah, I'm considered an expert in the state of California in erotic asphyxiation, not autoerotic asphyxiation. Okay. <laughs> so What's, I, and can you actually tell us the difference between the two for those who may not know? Yeah, asphyxiation is anytime air or blood is being restricted to the brain, right? So when it's autoerotic asphyxiation, it's where you have an implement trigger or contraption that is doing it for you and you're doing mm -hmm. it alone versus mm -hmm. doing it in general with someone else. So if I do erotic asphyxiation, I am choking my partner, wife, so on and so forth. Whereas someone else is going into a closet, maybe hanging themselves or doing something else that is really not, and I just want to stress this, really not safe. There's nothing safe about it, okay? No matter how many times you've done it, eventually it will catch up to you. So mm -hmm. I, there's a difference between erotic asphyxiation where you talk to someone and you make an agreement about what you're doing and then you receive some training and you have expertise you have uh, in, in this field and you do it versus people who are doing it by themselves in the privacy or, or hiding in the recesses of their home trying to get off. Mm hmm Wow. So tell us a little bit about, can you speak on any of the cases, even just in general terms, um, yeah. about these ones that you've been called in, your expertise has been called in on? Yeah. In most cases, I get brought in to help the jury understand why people engage in this type of practice. The next thing that I'm usually brought in for is to help people understand what the practice is and how it's done safely. The next thing that we talk about is why people would consent to doing this type of behavior, right? And the next thing is, how do we define if it's malicious, negligent, or if it is um, something that, that happened on the, as, a, as a fluke, something that mm -hmm. just accidentally happened. So those are usually my rules uh, when I step in there. I try not to come in. I can come in for the defense. I can come in for the uh, prosecution. But usually it's to help people understand the nuances of this thing because most people don't know about it. Right. And without getting into too much detail, because it sounds like this would be a lot to unpack. And you probably, I imagine, have done workshops and classes and such on this. <laughs> Definitely. Why, why do people enjoy um, erotic asphyxiation? What is the high that comes from that? Well, actually, you, you kind of nailed it. There is a high associated with it. And um, I, I don't want to do this thing. There's, there's this movie where um, they parody the movie Ray, where they go, the guys, they're doing drugs. This guy walks in. He says, you don't want to do it. He says, why? He said, because it feels really good. It's like, no, I think I want to do it. <laughs> like, oh, you're going to get high. Well, uh, no, I think I want to do it. You know I mean? It's like, I don't want to create this criteria where people like really get turned on with because it's really not the safest thing to do. That being said, um, most people do it because they're achieving a level of erection that they normally wouldn't get under any other circumstances. For the past 150 to 200 years, uh, people prescribed self asphyxiation as a way of achieving erection. It's called angel lust. People, doctors and physicians noticed that when people were hung, that they would get massive erections. And so it was originally used as a cure for erectile disorder. Okay. That is fascinating. Yeah. Uh, so that is one of the things. One of the reasons that people were can often castrate it before lynching was so that the erection wasn't visible right really yes especially in the south during uh, antebellum slavery that was part of the castration process so that they you know the, this kind of erection the, the masculine erection wasn't visible to the um to the public and this is why you almost never see erection in those videos i mean in those pictures because so, it would be offensive versus actually exactly hanging somebody that's not offensive but the the erection is offensive exactly is that the idea exactly wow. 
<laughs> so, so, so basically people can get an erection doing this, but it is very dangerous. As I said before, most people, the people die when they're being hung and they get this erection, but that's one of the reasons why I do it. Another reason is because ejaculation combined with oxygen deprivation can produce hallucinations. It can produce sensations that are associated with like, um, being on cocaine and having sex or ecstasy. Mm. It is fleeting and it causes a craving and people want to do it over and over and over again. They get almost, almost addicted to it. Are you, so do you teach classes or workshops on how people could engage in this practice safely? I do. And very rarely. <laughs> I used to do very big classes and uh, my lawyers like, dude, you're going to have to cut back on doing yeah. these classes because it's, it, you know, it's just a time bomb waiting to happen. And, um, but my, my thing is, is one of the reasons why people get hurt is because no one talks about how to do it as safely as humanly possible. Remember, you mm -hmm. can't do dangerous things safely. You can only do them safer. Right. Right. That's a good point. You know, so you have to go in, you have to learn from somewhere because most people are choking or putting their hands around necks, they're arresting breath or they're arresting uh, blood flow. They're doing something in their bedroom. I, I can't think of any of my friends, my Evelyn King friends, or any of my clients that at one point in time in one of their partnerships was either asked to be choked or had a hand around their throat, mm -hmm. right? It's something that people are doing and they have to understand how to mitigate the risks as best as possible. 